Welcome to the Nut Gallery Review Podcast, bringing you the news on the media that shapes your world. I'm Jason Schulte. I'm Sean McFadden. Welcome to episode 169. Well, everything's still shut down, so unfortunately, we're not really here with great news. <laughs> well, I, my opening piece of news is kind of good. But what you got? So uh, if you haven't seen by now, which I imagine most of the world has, Milan is going direct to D- Disney+. Plus. Yes. The, the, the live action uh, Milan remake. Um, so to me, that's pretty good news because I can get that for pretty much free. How are you getting it for free? Well, it's on Disney+. Plus. Or are they charging you for it? Extra? Correct. Correct. Uh, They're charging you uh, about $29 for it. Well, then that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's... Um, so you have to be a Disney Plus subscriber and you have to then pay extra. Correct, correct. Um, it's, I believe, I believe it's right around that $29 mark, but um, it's going to be released and it is an additional charge to watch it. So you can watch the premiere. Wow. So not awesome news because i think uh i think the movie's going to receive uh more hate than it deserves for that move but well yeah so i just looked quick milan will premiere on disney plus on september 4th foregoing its planned theatrical release in the united states due to coronavirus pandemic milan will cost 29.99 to watch in addition to your disney plus subscription fee which is 69 or six ninety nine per month, or sixty nine ninety nine per year. So thirty bucks to watch it. I'm hoping that's forever. I don't know, but I mean, when you really think about it, two tickets to go see it in the theater, plus driving, snacks, whatever, you're paying more than thirty bucks anyway. So I see where they're going with that, but also you're a streaming service, so that's not exactly. Yeah, I mean, that. I think this will be the first time that Disney Plus charges you extra for something Yeah, that I'm aware of. Yeah. So that seems a little change of course, I guess. And I realize yeah. that they got a lot of money invested, so they have to make it back. But Yeah, I, I know. And you, like part of you is like, yeah, I understand where you're going with that. But another part of you is like, don't I already pay you money every month for this? So it's kind of hard to see, you know, uh, either side really be planting your flag on it. Yeah. That's an unfortunate thing to have to do. Um, also, so we've talked about the movie tenant before, uh, it was in August, I believe, and it got pushed back now to September. Maybe it was in July. I don't remember anymore. They've been pushed back so many times. Yeah. Uh, so Tenet is now coming out also on September 3rd. It's directed by Christopher Nolan, stars Robert Pattinson. Uh, John David Washington is a new protagonist in Christopher Nolan's original sci-fi action spectacle, Tenet. Armed with only one word, Tenet, and fighting for the survival of the entire world, the protagonist journeys through the twilight world of international espionage on a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time, not time, time travel inversion. So yeah. that, okay. that's coming out September 3rd, apparently, and uh, once again, scheduled to be in theaters, but subject to change. Um, also in September, and it's slim pickings. It's like two releases. Um, is the King's Man three last time? So. Yeah. Um, so the King's Man on nine eighteen twenty is set to explore the origins of the Kingsman organization in early nineteen hundreds and up to World War One. Which I do want to see. I have enjoyed the the Kingsman movies. The first one I thought was phenomenal. The second one was enjoyable, but it it, it lost some of its luster. Yeah. And they're holding, too, that it's coming out. So 
Um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's, just, it's so challenging because if they don't start releasing movies, then theaters aren't going to open. And if theaters yeah. don't open, then you're not going to release movies. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg. You know, what's got to happen first? And I think... Well, supposedly uh, movie theaters are opening with uh, the New Mutants this coming Friday. So Yeah, uh, we'll see. And hopefully it all works out. I know... Yeah, it's just, but without, a, I mean, two movies in one month doesn't keep a movie theater running. You know what? Right now, with everyone being cooped up for so long, I bet you two movies is all they really need. <laughs> yeah, but they can only probably go to half capacity at best or a third capacity. So, so that uh, really limits things. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I understand. But. So, you know, at least you're making in some money instead of just, you know, paying for your land and rental and building and all of that, you know, and not getting anything. So that's all that's slated for September. Uh, I know there's some big ones still on the docket for October. So hopefully we get, get through and we get to October and we can have some genuine good movies coming out again. All right. All right. That's... It's going to be a really crappy holiday season if we get that far and we don't have movies coming out that we're well, all I mean, anticipating. Can you imagine right now what, uh, like, you know, uh, movie pickings are going to look like come holiday season? We haven't had movies coming out since, like, what, April? Right. So, I mean, it's going to be like, hey, guys, you remember Night Rider? Yeah, complete package Night Rider. You know, that's going to be like a hot ticket item because it's available. <laughs> Let's hope that's. Yeah, I, I just think the the window. So they've had a lot of time to have them ready for DVD releases. So I'm hopeful that like when Wonder Woman comes out, it's out by Christmas and on Blu-ray and DVD because it should be ready to go. Absolutely. And speaking of, as long as you're going to bring it up, every trailer they drop for Wonder Woman makes me go damn, they are really doing this well. It really looks good, and I don't want to jinx it, but I'm I'm super psyched for Wonder Woman. Well, and, and DC Fandom had um, a new Batman trailer that looked pretty good, and they had some information on Suicide Squad. Kills the Justice League uh, movie that's being developed. So. Yeah, I saw something about that, and I just kind of went, kind of gave it the side eye and scrolled on by. Yeah, so so those will be in the works at least. All right, all right. That is it for movies, so we'll move on to DVDs. Ah, all right, that's me. All right, so not great pickings, but we'll we'll walk through them here. Um, week of September first, uh, we've got uh, cut off, um, and since it's been a little while since we've talked about any of these here. I've got uh, a few of the bumpers here. Uh, Paul Herzfeld is a coroner who comes across a capsule lodged in the head of a, an unfortunate, severely mutilated corpse. The capsule contains a phone number and one word that would change everything. And the word was his daughter's name. This forensic thriller, thriller is full of twists and turns as follows the dangerous journey of a man desperate to find his daughter and bring her psychopathic kidnapper to justice. So... Woohoo. All right. I thought you were going to say the one word was tenant. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, <laughs> wouldn't it? Um, all right. Here, let's. Okay. Uh, next, we have Irresistible uh, with Stephen Carell and Rose Byrne. Uh, Steve Carell, sorry. Um, a small Wisconsin town, retired Marine Colonel Jack Hastings becomes a national star when a video of his protest for undocumented workers' rights goes viral. Wanting to capitalize on a shining moment of liberal support in a traditionally conservative state, top strategist Gary Zimmer tags him for the Democratic Party to win back the heartland. However, Zimmer's, Zimmerman is soon pitted against his Republican rival, Faith Brewster, who will stop at nothing to prevent Wisconsin from becoming a swing state. Uh, Hastings' bid for a change in a local race morphs into an all-out brawl for America's future. 
Um, probably the only uh, one of two movies with some actual, you know, quote unquote star power behind it coming out here this month. Uh, week of September 8th, we've got First Cow, which if you're going to name a movie, man, get more of this. First Cow just kind of comes out of left field and you're like, say what? Uh, <laughs> uh, struggling to survive in a harsh frontier of the Pacific Northwest during the 19th century, a lonely cook and a Chinese immigrant forge an unlikely friendship. Uh, intrigued by a glimpse of a lone cow brought into their territory by a rich landowner, they conspire to make some money by stealing its milk to use in baked goods uh, they sell to unsuspecting townspeople. As they build their wealth and dreams of a better life, their friendship deepens and they risk everything to escape the unforgiving landscape in which they find themselves. Uh, next right. we have a nice girl like you. Uh, main character Lucy makes an intimate bucket list of her journey of self-reflection after breaking up with her boyfriend. Uh, the other movie coming out this month to home theater uh, with some star power is Bad Education, uh, starring Hugh Jackman. Uh, and this is based on the true story of the nation's largest public school embezzlement scandal. Uh, we also have from the DCEU, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. Then we have... Uh, it must be animated. It is. Uh, the, uh, the DC animated universe there. So... Yeah, it'll, it'll be quality there. They, they always turn out some good stuff. Uh, week of September 15th, we've got Weathering With You, a Studio Ghibli movie. Uh, power with... Uh, power. A girl with the power to control weather is being hunted. And then final movie worth mentioning is Becky. Uh, Lulu Wilson stars alongside Kevin James. A young girl tries to free her family and home from the inmates who have taken it. Um, and the inmates are shown to be uh, basically uh, Nazi, neo-Nazi. Uh, and uh, it's a, a mixed race family. So that is kind of a little bit of the building of the tension there. But that pretty much ends your DVD releases. Um, so not, not a whole lot, but there are a couple, couple ones in there. I actually wouldn't mind seeing. So here's a question since there isn't a whole lot to talk about with that list of DVDs. Sure. Um, so all these like productions that have halted because of COVID mm -hmm. and now we're like rolling, rolling into like six months and actors will have changed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are we going to be like, Hey, did they just like switch out the act? No. Wait. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not that's not an unheard of thing for them, I mean, you know, with reshoots and things like that. So Yeah, but we're not done yet. <laughs> Fair. It's been a year since production. You're way grayer. We're gonna have to dye that hair. <laughs> or Oh come on. If we can if we can CGI Robert Downey Jr. to look twenty, I think we can handle a few gray hairs. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but yeah, those are those are the movies there. There's, as I said, there's a couple there worth watching there. But there's also a whole lot of just not great stuff hitting the shelves as well. Yeah. Video games. Video games. Mike? So Mike? yeah, <laughs> Mike? Oh, we're in Zoom. They they know he's not here. Yeah, <laughs> our usual shtick won't work anymore. Well, for those uh, just listening to the audio. Oh, that's true. That's true. We can present. I can, I can do my usual bad mic impression if that'll help. But I, I yeah. <laughs> All right. So last minute here, uh, we've got uh, Crusader Kings three for the PC coming out September first. Uh, real time strategy game in there. Uh, been reviewed well. Uh, Crusader Kings two went on forever and was supported well. So I do wish that company luck there. Um, we have on the switch, we've got MX versus ATV all out. Uh, we have uh, WRC nine 
Uh, that's World Rally Championship. I'm pretty sure that's what that stands for. It's rally car racing uh, coming out to pretty much everything. Uh, we have Marvel's Avengers uh, coming out to, again, everything September 4th. Um, I'm going to keep my eye on that one because I really kind of want to really dig into this, but I have also heard a lot of like uh, mutterings about uh, like microtransactions and things like that. So going to take a look into that before I actually dig in. Um, for PC, PS4 and Xbox on September 4th, we've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Um, and I just watched a, a video of this before the podcast and it's pretty much just like you remember, uh, you know, controls tightened up there a little bit and just the visuals streamlined up. Um, it looks great. I'm going to check this out. Uh, we have kingdoms of Amalur re reckoning coming out for PS4 and Xbox on September 8th. Basically a re-release of the Kingdoms of Amalur game, which I played, but kind of got a little bored, but it is uh, pretty much a, like a love child of many people. So they had the money to make it happen. Uh, we have Bounty Battle coming out to PS4, Xbox, and Switch on September 10th. We have Inertial Drift coming PS4, Xbox, and Switch on September 11th. Uh, we've got let's, Spelunky 2 coming out for PS4 on September 15th. And that's, uh, you probably have never seen Spelunky, but basically it's a, a 2D side-scrolling like cave exploration game. It's, it's kind of got some, some heart and it's fun. Uh, we have uh, Medieval Dynasty, September 17th for the PC. WWE 2K Battlegrounds uh, for pretty much everything. September 18th, we have got that's Unrailed. A bit, I believe the, the Battlegrounds is more of a cartoony, more like a big or a... a okay. Less um, like realistic, but more, um, more larger than life style. Okay. All right. So, that would work for a wrestling game. Yeah. I think it'll, it'll be a good fit. Uh, for that and and it could be a lot of fun uh unrailed for everything coming out september 23rd uh going under again for everything on september 24th uh serious sam 4 comes out for the pc on september 24th and yes i believe you, serious yes sam you're 4 serious is a re oh yeah i am serious okay <laughs> Uh, let's see here. And, oh, I can't end this without talking about this. Baldur's Gate 3 comes out end of the month, September 30th. I can't believe we're getting another Baldur's Gate game. And that is our video game releases. That might be my favorite uh, option on there, actually, is the Baldur's yeah. Gate. Do you remember playing old school Baldur's Gate? How much fun that was? It, yeah. Yeah. Just makes me want to dig out the old, you know, CDs, see if I can still find them and give that a run. But ah, everything's on, uh, on Steam or Epic now anyway. So, but uh, yeah, that is, that is everything there. Um, at least there's some solid uh, games on each platform there getting uh, a little <clears throat> little pc love there yeah i think there's something for everyone there so movie classic was your pick indeed it was um i i picked my very first vhs tape and i know i'm dating myself a little bit by doing that however i don't care um, I picked Stargate, not the series, not SG-1, just Stargate the movie, starring Kurt Russell and James Spader. Uh, back of the box here. When a mysterious woman makes professional, professional, Professor Daniel Jackson 
an offer he can't refuse. He ends up in a secret Air Force military base. His mission, to decode an ancient Egyptian artifact known as the Stargate. The mission leader, Colonel Jack O'Neill, played by Kurt Russell, a tough military man with nerves of steel, commandeers their trip through the Stargate to an ancient civilization on the other side of the universe. But once there, they must battle the astoundingly powerful sun god Ra before they can find their way back home. Um, so, uh, why I picked it? Uh, well, first off, it's got kind of a special place in my heart simply because of it was the very first movie that I bought. Uh, this was the very first one I owned. Um, it's got that, I, I hesitate to use the word classic, but it's, you know, it's got that kind of classic sci-fi vibe to it. And, you know, when you could tell that everything was an actual prop, the Stargate itself was there, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't CGI'd in. And in fact, like the big, you know, effect of the Stargate opening up while well, looking phenomenal on screen was literally them turning the camera sideways um, and the actors putting their face into water. And I was like, that's so genius. It's so low tech, but it looks so good on the big screen. Um, and just the, the thought of, uh, you know, the Egyptians being connected to, you know, this uh, space faring race. It's not, it's not a new concept, um, but this was 1996, 1994, 1994. So, I mean, this may have helped kick off the wait, Egyptians, aliens, this matches. Um, but it's got, it's got a good, uh, it's got a good heart, good story overall there. Um, it takes you a minute, uh, to recognize some of the actors because you'll pick up uh, James Spader's voice before you realize, wait a minute, that's James Spader playing like, you know, the intellectual professor. Um, Kurt Russell, you can always pick out Kurt Russell, but, you know, he almost looks like a baby in this one. Um, you know, we're so used to seeing him a, a bit older there. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've gone on a bit here. Jay, how do you feel about Stargate? Well, I was going to talk, go a different direction with what you're talking about so far. So it's directed by Roland Emmerich. And, okay. and uh, for, for people who maybe aren't familiar with his body of work, um, he has created Universal Soldier, Independence Day, Godzilla, The Patriot, The Day After Tomorrow, 10,000 BC, 2012, uh, White House Down, Inter uh, Independence Day Resurgence, and um, Midway in uh, 2019. And he's working on an announced uh, Stargate movie. Oh. So there could so, be a continuation of this in some form. So sci-fi and military movies. And end of world. Okay. All right. Cool. So... So, I mean, this is all good stuff that he did. So, right off the bat, this was early in his his work. But, um, and I think it sits right in there with all of those that he's done. I mean, a lot of those, I think, could fit classic or will fit classic status at some point in their life. Uh, but um, just the cons. So, as you mentioned, they used um, real props. And real, you know, like really drove a, a you know, car. And uh, there's a scene where they're working on the Stargate and there's a coffee cup on the table and the building's shaking and, the co and they're making the coffee cup shake. And we, we don't get those in movies anymore. Those, <laughs> those like little quick moments of, yeah, we're going to just put a coffee cup on a table and we're going to vibrate the table and make the coffee cup bounce around to show... How, how much this thing, how much power is coming out of this thing. Um, it, it had to have been brutal working in that, those sand dunes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, so they spent a quite a bit of a time in the desert and it had to be brutal. Um, 
neat little fact the the uh, desert creature that they show is actually um, a horse decorated. Yeah, to, it's to an actual that horse that they basically just put more or less a puppet yeah. on top of. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. So, so I mean, they, they did, they found unique ways to make it a different universe. And, and I have no, no qualms about us talking about this film. I think it, it's great. Um, uh, one of the things that I think is also unique about this is when they first put this movie in front of test audiences, it didn't do well. Like 30% of them were the only ones that responded positively. Yes, I did read that as well, yeah. To the film. And so they went back and tweaked it. They added um, Ra's eyes to glow to make it very clear that he's uh, alien. The um, vibrating voice, yep. And yeah, using a, a different language uh, with subtitles. Um, also, just, just to make it a little bit more um, very clear, I guess, on what, yeah. what's happening. And it came back, and it was very positive after that. So, so I guess yeah. back in those days, they did listen to test audiences, and they did try <laughs> to fix things. I don't know that that happens as much anymore. So, well, one of one of my favorite things about this movie, and it's it's such a a silly little thing, but I love that there's a theme and a physicality to the transportation and teleportation. Whether it's the Stargate themselves, this you know large ring that's transporting them pretty much across the universe, or transporting from inside a pyramid to Ra's ship, these physical rings just drop from the ceiling and start stacking up and then teleport the matter that's inside that. And I thought that was such a cool effect. It wasn't just you know, this beam of light or anything like that. It was something physical that came down and encased it and then then was taken away. And then the rings receded back there. I always thought that was such a cool effect. Well, it, it gives it a very Egyptian feel to it. Like, like you said, how would Egyptians do teleportation? And then you're like, yeah, they do it with these rings. You're like, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, it's just, it's it was a different take on it first off, you know, because you know, since Star Trek, we've seen the the beaming effect and that just kind of became like, oh, that's how teleportation works. And then all of a sudden these big physical rings that look like they weigh, you know, 40, 50 pounds just start stacking up around people and that's how they teleport. I mean, that's almost got to be more terrifying just to be encased in these things and then taken away. But yeah, I always liked that touch. A little different something new. And I guess, you know, to talk a little bit about the story, the story starts out on, on, you know, them discovering this ring in like the 1920s and here they are in modern times and they still haven't like decoded it. And, <laughs> yep. and this uh, scientist that no one wants to believe and is the guy that cracks the code and figures it out and basically says, well, you're looking at it backwards, um, you know. It's always the crackpot, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he figures it out in, like, days or weeks where yep. they've been working on it for, you know, 40 years and, uh, no, 60 years or whatever it was, haven't gotten but, anywhere. And that's even a line in the movie that one of the, the military commanders is like, wait, you figured this out in two weeks and they've been working on it for four years? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I did. And so I guess I just, the story kind of moves along in that direction. And then they, you know, I mean, you have to take liberties at some things. Like they're just like, okay, it turned on. Let's go through it. Like, <laughs> we have no idea where we're going, but hey, let's go through it because yeah. there's atmosphere on the other side. And we don't know if we can get back, but we're going to go through it. And well, I think that's that's part of the story is the main character, um, uh, Daniel, pretty much says like, no, 
I can get this back. No worries. You know, like, yeah, whatever. I'll just decipher it on the other side. We'll be good. Yeah. Like, um, have you ever done this before? I think your confidence is a little misplaced, sir. Uh, but and then, yeah. and then they appear in this, this world and it's the same, but different uh, in ways. And, you know, the people are mining this material that they made the Stargate out of. And that's kind of what powers Ra's world <laughs> around him. And, and there's some story about how, you know, why he is the way he is and, and things. And I mean, it just, it's a very good developmental movie in my mind. Yeah. It's, they do lay out a story and though it gets a little stretched in a few places, it's still, you know, a cohesive story, you know, what's going on and yeah, you, you, you start feeling for the characters there. The only part, and this bothered me in 1994 when I first watched this. Okay. They have this map on a wall that's that like is tracing what they send through this portal. Okay. Yep. They never really explain how they're able to track something jetting across the universe. Like there it goes. It just passed through like you know. 10,000 yep. light years away, but we're still tracking it. Yep. And we're still getting, you know, readings that there's oxygen and like, well, how exactly are you getting those readings? Well, I mean, part of the wormhole remains open and they're sending transmissions through there. Yeah. I think that would take some time to develop that technology, but, uh, uh, still that's I the mean, only thing I can see how you'd think how you would, you know, because they're like, oh, yep, they we're tracking this. It's, you know, four billion miles away now. And it's like, how do you know? Yeah, I get you. So that that bothered me the first time I saw it. I'm like, they really had that kind of like tech that they can track this. <laughs> uh, you know, that we have that kind of tech. Why aren't we building our own Stargate? Right, right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's minor. And, I, you know, I, you know, you have you've talked about James Spader and you have Kurt Russell, who's kind of the hard hardened guy. Um, but you know, they set up on why he kind of is, um, as well. Um, he also though is a guy that's going to protect his people and he's going to do the right thing. And so, yeah, I think there's, there's moments where he kind of shines as well. Yeah. It, uh, cause he, cause he comes across kind of as a protagonist to a degree at times at times yeah i i'd call him a secondary protagonist um and you know there's this group of uh teenage boys that kind of become fascinated with him you know on the other side of the stargate and i never quite understood one of the scenes until i was watching it again and then i realized um very early on in the movie uh you know uh the colonel is, is Kurt Russell, he's just very despondent. He's kind of off in his own little world. Um, but you find out basically his son, you know, took a gun and killed himself. So he's just like, yep, okay. And he's taking this mission as like, well, what do I know, have to what, lose? What do I have to lose? Exactly. And then, you know, when one of these, you know, teenage boys on the opposite side starts reaching for his gun, he flips the heck out. Um, when I first saw that, I was just like, you know, he doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want them touching his stuff or whatever. He just got angry. And I was like, Oh no, he's protecting them. He doesn't want them going for, you know, a weapon just like his son did. So yeah, bit more in depth this time going through. Yeah. So I'm, I have no problem calling this a classic all um, right i'm well, i'm with yeah. you a hundred percent on that one and uh you know surprisingly i thought it held up well i you know i thought I, so too i've heard of i saw a couple couple places where it's mentioned that the that the, the graphics are dated or the special effects are dated i'm like you know what for for the most part they held up decent um in my mind um and and almost uh 
entertaining in itself the the way the methods they used for special effects and and things so so i guess i disagree that it's super dated um i think it's i think it is a great sci-fi film the only way i'd say the effects are dated is maybe the foley artist uh who doing the who doing jesus listen to me who is doing the the sound effects um maybe goes a little over top sometimes but other than that i i like i like the physical props i like the the fact that it's there you know it's not just you know we're pretending and looking at a green screen well and uh, you know the soundtrack surprised me too because I didn't remember that under there's a like an underlying uh, uh, little like themes s- snippet that they play in any tense moments, and I didn't didn't remember that. It's it's almost kind hmm. of almost horror-ish with trying to build up some intensity. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah, so that the almost Indiana Jones as well. You know, it's kind of got that uh, feel to it a little bit. Uh, so I was kind of, I didn't remember that, that, that kind of had that and, and, uh, I appreciate it a little bit, I guess. Nice. Yeah. I don't think I quite, uh, I don't think I quite caught on to that, but, uh, I, I, the building of the music. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm w- willing to close the door on this one and. All right. It's, it's a good old sci-fi movie. I mean, old at this point, it was <laughs> new to me at one time, but, uh, yeah, a sci-fi movie worth watching. We'll leave it at that. So what have we been up to lately? I really have been, this is my super busy time at work. So I have a very short list. I read the um, Babylon 5 Voices book. Ooh, it was book, was that? One, book one in a series in the 90s as well. So going back a ways, um, it's really good actually i was i was surprised at um how good it was and how quick of a read it was um you know it takes place on babylon 5 it has all the standard characters from like season two and uh all the telepaths are converging on babylon 5 which creates havoc if anyone knows the ba- if you know the babylon 5 um universe so yeah, it was good. It was a good, quick read. I enjoyed it. I'm hoping to have a review up for it soon. <laughs> nice. And that's about it. Um, I haven't really okay. had much time for video games. Played a few hours of um, Minecraft, and that's about it, really. All right. Um, well, I have been enjoying uh, Deep Rock Galactic. Uh it's that game I was telling you guys about last month, the, uh, the space dwarves mining in there and just uh, exploring these caves and finding minerals and resources and trying to get up enough stuff to get out before the local bug swarm knows you're there. Um, not sure if I mentioned it last month. Uh, did finish Peace Talks by Jim Butcher as I look at it up on my shelf there um, and started this one. It's uh, Aftershock. It's Acts of War book two in the Iron Kingdoms Chronicle. Uh, For those of you curious, that is the world that War Machine takes place in. Um, For, you know, a not quite mainstream series there. It's actually really good. Um, The first book was really quite engaging and I'm, I guess I'm probably right around chapter 10 right now. And it's, it's held my attention really well and I'm quite, uh, quite into it. And that, um, that's pretty much been my month besides the fact that uh, I now have my girlfriend and my daughter uh, hooked on Avatar uh, the Last Airbender. We were uh, just sitting down, uh, you know, getting a little something to eat with lunch. And they're like, oh, let's watch something. I said, okay. And I just took the controller and put it on before they knew what was going on. I watched the first episode and then we're like, okay, we need more of that. So we're working through uh, season one of that right now. 
Awesome. And that that's pretty much and, it. And, you know, I just want to say we do not uh, get any kickbacks for endorsing any of these things. So uh, yeah. when, we, when we talk about things we've read or reading or playing, we get nothing uh, to uh, cause us to endorse a product. Uh, yeah. But if there's companies out there that would like us to endorse <laughs> products, you know, always get a hold of, you can get a hold of us, but uh, uh, no, these are things that we pick up with our own money. And uh, I had like, to hunt this down on Amazon. I couldn't find it anywhere else. So, and Amazon does not give us kickbacks either. So, nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is a uh, losing financial adventure that we, we have chosen to do to help inform you <laughs> of, of the things we enjoy. So I guess on that note, I'll say until next time. Good night, everybody.